Hi, my name is Bill Thompson, and this video is for my friends at ISGR, the International School of the Gothenburg Region. And my wife and I had the pleasure of visiting your school a couple of years ago, and we got to meet all the fantastic students there, and we got to meet their wonderful librarian, Floor, and her family. And what I would like to do today is talk to you a little bit about my children's book, Fossil, and more specifically, what inspired me to create this book. Whenever I do a children's book, the very first thing I need to do is start off with an idea. And this book was inspired by a favorite childhood memory of mine. When I was a boy, we lived in a state called Virginia, and we lived out in the country. And my favorite thing to do was to go down to the creek and catch things. I caught uh, frogs, I caught salamanders, I caught tadpoles. Every day after school, I'd run down to the creek and see what I could catch. And it was kind of tricky when I would try to go to catch things because there was a little hill that led down to the creek. And on that hill was a whole bunch of rocks. And if I wasn't careful, sometimes some of the rocks would fall and I would create a little avalanche and those would fall into the water and splash and scare the frogs away. So one day I was walking down and I was trying to be careful, but I slipped and I slid down this little hill and all the rocks came sliding down with me. And I looked down and I looked at one of the rocks and I noticed that it was broken open and inside there was an image of part of a leaf and it was a fossil. And if you don't know what a fossil is, a fossil is, a, is an image of a plant or an animal that's been encased in a rock and it's been there for thousands of years. So suddenly these things that were a big problem, these rocks that were falling in the water, suddenly became something I was fascinated with. And my brothers and I were breaking open the rocks and finding different fossils inside some of them. So it was really interesting. So that was the inspiration behind my children's book, Fossil. So I'll take you through the story real quick. Now this book is a wordless book, and that means it has no words in it. And I didn't put words in it because I wanted smart kids like you to be able to tell the story. You can name the characters, you can come up with sound effects, and you get to describe what happens. And the best thing about the word, a wordless book is the story can change every time you read it. So this story starts off with a boy walking with his dog. This is the uh, dedication page. And if you look at this page, you see they start to come upon uh, the edge of some, uh, some water, and the dog is stopped, and he's checking out this interesting rock. So the boy picks up the rock, and he's looking at it, and he's not paying attention, and what's on the ground in front of him? There's a stick, and he's not paying attention, and what do you think's gonna happen? He doesn't see the stick, and he trips over it, and he goes flying, and the rock goes flying up in the air, and that frog goes flying all the way up in the air, and lands on another rock and smashes in half, revealing a fossil inside it, and more specifically, a fossil of a fern. So the boy reaches for the fern fossil, and he looks up, and magically, magically in front of him, some ferns start to appear. So what was inside the rock came to life. So the boy can't believe it, and he's looking at these ferns. Meanwhile, his dog starts digging in the ground, and the dog starts digging up another rock. So the boy takes that one out of the ground, and he picks it up, and he smashes it. And inside that one, there's a dragonfly fossil. And then wouldn't you know it? a dragonfly suddenly comes to life. Well, you can see the dog looking at that dragonfly. What do you think the dog's gonna do? The dog starts chasing after it. And that dragonfly starts flying to a third rock. And then the boy sees that third rock and he takes that one up and that's a bigger one and a heavier one. He drops that and inside that fossil, or inside that rock, there's a fossil part of a claw. So that's different than the other fossils. So the boy starts looking at it, and suddenly he starts hearing the flapping of wings behind him. And he turns around, and there's a giant pteranodon flapping his wings. And of course, the boy, like I would be, he's absolutely terrified, and he takes off running. And the dog's trying to protect him. And then suddenly the boy looks up, and his dog is on the pteranodon's back. So now the boy has to figure out how he's gonna save his dog. So he takes off chasing after the pteranodon, flying up in the air. And if you look at the dog, the dog looks like he's almost smiling, so he's having a good time. But the boy's afraid for him, so he's chasing after him. And in his chase, he accidentally steps on the, uh, the fossil, uh, the uh, fern fossil. And then the ferns disappear. So then the boy gets an idea and he goes, hmm. If the fern fossil, when it broke, if the ferns disappeared, maybe the, the uh, pteranodon would disappear as well. 
So he takes off running in the opposite direction. And look at the dog. He's looking like, why are you abandoning me? And the boy runs over and he finds that claw fossil and he picks it up and he smashes it. And then you can see the pteranodon disappears and his dog falls in the water and splashes. And you can see he's still smiling. He had a good time the whole time. And then the dog swims to shore and the boy and his dog are reunited. So that's my, my children's book, my wordless book, Fossil. And again, it doesn't have any words in it because I want kids like you to be able to come up with names for the characters, to tell what's going on, to come up with sound effects. And this book was inspired by a favorite childhood memory of mine. And what I would like each of you to do is I would like you to come up with your own drawings. I'd like you to make a drawing about a favorite memory that you have or about something that you like. And to inspire you, I thought I would do a little drawing of the dog with a, a fossil in his mouth. So if we walk around here, I'll show you how I do a drawing. I will always like to start off by doing two circles. So there's one circle and two circle. And, and can you guess what those are? Those are gonna be his eyes. And then I'm gonna draw his nose. I'm gonna put his nose down here. And I draw a little upside down triangle shape. And I'll give his nose a little bit of shading. And then I'm gonna have our dog smiling. And then in our dog's mouth, I'm gonna put a fossil. You know, dogs like to chase bones. Well, this dog just discovered a fossil. So he's bringing it back to us in his mouth. So I need to draw the fern on top of his fossil and the leaves. I'm gonna give him a couple little bumps up over his eyes. Now I'm gonna draw the shape of his head. I'll give him a neck, give him a little shading under his neck. I'll put a collar on him. I'll add some dots for textures of the rock. Now, did I forget something? I think I forgot his ears. So I'm gonna give him curly ears, just like the dog in my fossil book. And then I'm gonna use the side of my marker. I'm gonna shade in and just make his ears a little bit darker so they have a little bit of texture and a little bit darker value so they have some contrast so they stand out better. And there's one ear. And I'm gonna shade this one too in a similar way. And there's the other ear. So there's my dog. And I hope that inspires you to make your own drawing. And again, I would like each of you to think about a favorite memory that you have or something that you really like and then make a drawing about it. So goodbye to my friends from the ISG, ISGR school in Gothenburg. And it was wonderful visiting your school a couple of years ago. And I hope you guys all stay safe and God bless each and every one of you. Bye.